Jack in Kalkaska, Michigan. Hey, Jack, I've been to Kalkaska. How you doing? Thanks for watching Free Speech TV on Direct TV. What's up? I'm doing great. Glad uh, you're still on. Thank you. What's up? Keep it up, will you? I'll do my very best. Okay. I wanted to just say a couple of quick things. Uh, go along. You're talking about your family, World War II. I'm 78. I was about nine years old. My dad got drafted. He had five kids. They were getting down low, you know. Mm-hmm. He got sent to Guam to the CB, helped build the airstrip when the Marines took the island there. But he got home in the GI Bill. We were living in a three-room basement apartment. And, uh, you know, a big apartment building-like thing. Yeah. After that, he got into the trucking business. We got our first home, which was un- we never thought we would ever own a home. But next to that, I don't want to give the Republicans any credit, but I've thought about, I think it was J.P. Morgan and maybe Carnegie, the two guys that gave their fortunes to the government to help them get through bad times. Well, I think that's by and large a myth. Is that a myth? Yeah, yeah. There's And, and Rockefeller actually paid several hundred million dollars in today's dollars, the Rockefeller family, back during the, the Depression to, uh, to do a PR campaign to enhance their image. And, they, and the, uh, they hired Edward Bernays, and he had Rockefeller down passing out shiny dimes, and they, they had all this PR. And meanwhile, in the background, they were breaking strikes and things. So, uh, you know, Morgan was um, uh, Herbert Hoover's Secretary of the Treasury. But he, you know, when he was confronted with the Great Depression, his response, as I recall, it was Morgan, his response was liquidate everything, liquidate labor, yeah. liquidate capital. I mean, he just wanted to make, he, his response was the exact same thing that Mitt Romney said about the housing crisis, right. let it hit bottom. Right. We'd have rolled up the streets and have been all done. Yep. Yep. That's terrible. Yeah. Well, I didn't want to give him uh, any credit. I thought I'd embarrass so him. So your point that. was that at one point in time, the billionaires were patriotic. I think that they were, actually. You know, uh, there was a time when there was, if not the appearance of noblesse oblige, of the obligation of nobility, as, as I think Morgan and DuPont did, but also the reality of it. And I think the Kennedy family is the best example of that, although Franklin Roosevelt and Teddy Roosevelt were both very, very wealthy. And they went into politics, and they stood loudly against the class into which they were That's born. That's right. That's right. And, and so there's no shortage of very wealthy people, millionaires, and in today's dollars, arguably even billionaires, certainly the Kennedy family, um, who, who uh, committed themselves to public service and did so when they could have done like Mitt Romney and just gone off and gotten richer and richer and richer. And, um, yeah. So anyhow, Jack, thanks a lot for the call. Great to hear from you, and thanks for watching Free Speech TV up there in, in Kalkaska. Uh, Sharon in Oakdale, Minnesota. Hey, Sharon, thanks for listening to uh, AM 950. What's up? Hi, Tom. How apropos that you were speaking about freedom because Don Siegelman is not, and that's why I'm calling. Mm -hmm. I've learned about uh, Don Siegelman through listening to your show, Mm -hmm. and I've signed the petition. I've emailed the president asking for a pardon for him, and I've written to Don Siegelman in prison to... Just tell him that I signed the petition and to keep the faith. And today I got a letter from him today. Wow. In the mail. Well, that's yeah. wonderful. Good on, good yeah, on you. Really and cool. And, and Don Siegelman, I before E, donsiegelman.org, by the way, is the website for anybody who's curious. He is America's yeah. political prisoner. Karl Rove hounded this man and, and finally threw him in jail, in my opinion, highly illegally. So that that is great. Sharon, thank you for yep. sharing that he story. He told me to keep it up and keep pushing the peti- petition for him and... He it's sounds the, positive. So yeah, well, like, he's... I'm sorry. Go ahead. I, I would just like everyone to, to go and sign that petition and, and ask the president for a pardon. This is yes. a great injustice to this man. I agree. And if there was ever somebody who, who really deserved one, it's Don Siegelman. Sharon, thank you so much for the call, and thanks for, for becoming an activist, for getting out there and, and, and showing up and, and, and participating. Bruce in Royal Oak, Michigan. Hey, Bruce, what's on your mind? How you doing, Tom? Great. What's up? Great. Uh... Freedom to me. I believe in the free enterprise system. I believe in our Constitution and our Bill of Rights. What I don't believe in is when the rich and the elite, like the Romneys, use the law to reverse it as, a, as, as something against the, the American people. And they're actually doing something immoral, possibly illegal, but, you know, we can say that's alleged. But it's definitely immoral. And they just have this attitude like, well, you know, because I used to get this at my work. If I 
maybe suggested doing something different. Right away, the, op- the opinion was, what, are you a communist? Right. Are you a socialist? Don't you believe in the free enterprise? System? Well, what is it that the, that Mitt Romney's doing that so upsets you? Well, just just this attitude of like I'm I'm holier than thou, and uh-huh. if, you know, like you said on one television program, you can't afford health care and you die too bad. Yeah. Well, that I well that was you know start too... thinking that way. They're like they think they're God. Yeah. You know well, they they actually develop this godlike attitude. Yeah, that was the the uh, the essence. Actually, it was Ron Paul who was asked that question in the Republican debates, and somebody in the audience yelled, "Let him die!" But you know, Mitt Romney last night said, uh, "Yeah, we've got health care. You can go to the ER." Um, so I think you know, excellent point and and well made, Bruce. Thank you very much for the call, Pat and 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 Ann saying, "Just stop it! Just stop it!" You, uh, Pat in Detroit, Michigan, listening to uh, AM thirteen ten W uh, WDTW. Hey, Pat, what's up? Hey, Tom. You're getting a lot of calls from Michigan this afternoon. We are. Maybe it's because I mentioned my dad. I should mention my mom, too. Her dad died when she was 13, and she and, and my, my wife's uh, dad, Louise's dad, uh, he came back from World War II, and on the GI, and his mother had died when he was a teenager, and or maybe younger than that, and uh, he, you know, the GI Bill put him through college, and he became the assistant uh, attorney general for the state of Michigan. Yeah. I mean, you know, my, from, from uh, nothing. background... My background similar to yours. My father never got a union job, but my mother was a school teacher and belonged to a union that way. Yep. Um, I have thought a lot about the meaning of the word freedom, and it uh, kind of, if I looked at it like, well, what, what is the opposite of freedom? And that would be the absence of choice. If you're a slave, you don't have a choice mm-hmm. as to what you do, who you work for, where you go. And so I scoff at Republicans who use the word freedom when they seek to limit choice, especially um, as a woman, mm-hmm. um, I feel this limit uh, my reproductive choices, uh, attempt to limit my choice of occupation. Um, it, it really burns me that they use the word freedom and get away with it when they're you know, trying to choke, uh, choke the freedom right out of the country. Yeah. Well, they're, they're pretty specific in what they mean. I mean, you know, Rick Perry said it very well, freedom from taxes, freedom from regulation, freedom from litigation. And, uh, in other words, freedoms that are only freedoms if you're worth, you know, millions of dollars or billions of dollars, that, that only become of consequence. Those are things that are irrelevant to the average working person. The average working person right. wants to know that they have freedom from hunger, that they have freedom from homelessness, that they have freedom from joblessness, that they have, excuse me, the, the, as Thomas Jefferson wrote in the Declaration of Independence, they have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And, and you are not free, and you can't be alive if you right. don't have access to health care. Well, I think of it, too, in the freedom to make changes, yes. not just freedom from want, yes. freedom to make changes. Yes, so. very well said, Pat. Thank you very much for the call. And, and you know, in, in earlier generations, in my parents' generation, in, in, earlier in my life, there was so much more choice in the United States. There were, you could start businesses more easily. There were, it, it's, it's really quite remarkable how much Reagan has devastated this country.